right, today on the show, we're going to be uh, taking this apart. The KK's Priest new album, as I just said, it was just, oh, just released. <clears throat> just, just released, uh, you know, uh, what was it, Friday. And uh, it's it's very um, polarizing in a sense where you have one group of uh, Judas Priest hardcore fans, you know, neighing it, saying, I'm, this is not what I like. And then you have another group of Priest fans and KK's fans and Ripper fans saying they love it. This is the best thing ever. So let's just talk about it. Let's break it down. I'll ask each one of you guys questions. At the end, we could sort of give a, a, a brief little summary, and we might have a quick little guest jump on for five minutes. All right. Is it K-Man? Is K-Man coming on? K-Man's not coming on. I we should be K-Man's... K- is, is, it is it Ripper? I got to watch what I'm saying. There should be KK's priest and K-Man's priest. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. I'm going to start off with this, all right? I'm going to go, Perrin, what do you think about the artwork? Just, just in general, as what do you, what do you think? Uh, I like the artwork. The artwork's okay. I mean, you know, we've kind of seen the uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse on the horse kind of before. So, I mean, it kind of still reminds me of like Saxon in a way and Grim Reaper in a way. You know, it's like it's not, it's not it's like, not no cheesy little artwork here. This is a very well defined <laughs> picture here, right? Correct. It's nice. It's it's All nice. Right. Uh, it's it's very heavy metal. It's very okay. heavy metal. Yeah. All right, Giles, what do you think about the artwork? Uh, nothing wrong with it, but I think they've missed a bit of a marketing opportunity here. Mm-hmm. That, and they may not want to do this, but look at those 80s priest album covers like Screaming for Vengeance, Defenders of the Faith, Turbo. Uh, you know, that sort of style. To, I always missed that style. I think they're all done by the same artists, actually. To recreate something iconic and emblem and like an emblem like that would have been really cool. But that's all just right. me. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong Define, with it. Sam, what do you think? Look, I cannot deny that it's well done, that it's okay. They, you know, now with uh, computers and everything, you can make some really, really nice artwork. Uh, My issue with the cover is the same issue I have with the rest of the album. Well, we're not going to go into that. We're just talking about just the cover now in general. Just go ahead. A nice imitation of Judas Priest's classic cover. Okay. It's a good cover. It's, it, I think enough. it's a good cover. I, I wish it was. I wish it was. I wish it was more of an imitation. If you want, to, if, if, you want if you want to compare, like quickly, right? You know, just a little bit of the covers. I like Jugulator, but I, I I will never understand why they used a close up of Jugulator head rather than the full image. I, I mean, look at this. Inside. Ram it down. I mean, Ram that's down. a cover. That's, that's a hell of a cover. Ram it down. It, yeah, it's a beautiful cover. Go ahead. It's a great, is great cover. Not a Judas Priest album. Why does he use Judas Priest iconography? When you buy a Bruce Dickinson solo album Mm -hmm. or a Dennis Stratton solo album or a whatever solo album and you see somebody putting using the, 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 the graphics of the Iron Maiden name, the first thing you would say is, oh, what a ripoff. That's the problem I have. Beautiful. All but right, all right. Not Judas so which, which, so, which so to me, which, I, I'm looking. This is the logo you're talking about in this logo. Is that what you're saying? This sort of I don't even I don't even know what he's saying because which I don't know cover is it, which priest cover is it even ripping off? How many album covers do they have for the Grim Reaper? None. My God, don't you understand <laughs> that this is a style, a lettering, everything to make you think it's a Judas Priest record. Look, it just says there, Priest. Eh. I, no, no, I don't, no, I don't think they want, I don't think he wants to. Uh, is he allowed to use KK? I mean, he's allowed okay. to use Priest. I mean, but, but he's guys, just saying KK's Priest. That's yeah, another I, I don't think right he there. wants you to think it's a Judas Priest record. I think KK is so insecure. He oh wants to Lord. make sure, he wants to make sure everyone remembers, hey, I was in Judas Priest, everybody. I was in Judas Priest and they won't let me back in. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I don't know parent, about that. Parent, you go around telling everyone who listened that you're on the metal voice, so isn't that the same thing? The metal voice is like a badge of honor, man. I wear that badge it's of right honor. Here, right here. I right fly here, the right flag here. proudly. <laughs> well, then I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure KK is very proud of his contributions to one of the best metal bands that's in the world. It, but as far as I know, I haven't quit the metal voice, and I haven't then done an about face begging to get back in of Jimmy not letting me. Perrin's voice. Guys, guys, I think KK's Priest, it's it's sort of, K- hi, I'm KK, and, you know, I'm I'm half of Judas Priest or one-third of Judas Priest, and I think that one there's nothing wrong. 
one fifth. Come on, one fifth. What do you? <laughs> no, you got Rob, you got Glenn, and you got uh, you know KK as a legacy. I mean, as a legacy. As no a, offense, as the songwriter. He, he clearly songwriter. wasn't the creative as a force songwriter. Movie. He clearly no. wasn't the creative force. That's for sure. All right. So now that we've discussed, I, I personally, I love this. To me, this is pure heavy metal, and this is exactly yes. what I want to see on my metal heavy metal record. Look at that. The, the one horseman, right? There it is. Yeah, exactly. All right. Stefan, if during when Ripper was in the band, okay? Yeah. If they would have released this album instead of this album, Jugulator, which a lot, you know, is very polarizing as well, do you think they would have had more success? This type of album versus this type of album. What do you think? I don't think so. Uh, Judas Priest uh, with Ripper was essentially a glorified cover band as far as I'm concerned you know how much I used to love how much I love using the word cover band they hired a guy who sounded as much as he could to Rob Alford and they released you know a couple of albums uh, this one is sort of a watered down version of Judas Priest without uh, without the rest of the guys. And look, we will be able to get to the music very shortly. I, I, I do think it's, it's a good heavy metal record, but please spare me the Judas Priest uh, comparison. Oh, as good as such and such album from Judas all right, all right, all right. okay okay but i mean you know like again what i'm saying is if ripper and i'll i'll, I'll speak to giles on this if if ripper would have come this is more of a down-tuned album more of an industrial album whereas this is more of a you know a regular tuning album more upbeat now giles if this album would have been released instead of this one do you think they would have had a lot more headway back in the day like they would have um, not no, but that's nothing to do with the music. Prince couldn't sell a record in the nineties. I mean, you know, it's it. Jugulator is an awesome album. D is it lacking a couple of more classic sounding priest songs? Yes, but it's an awesome album. I loved it so much. I actually had a Jugulator party when it came out, and I invited my friends. And what we happened listened to, to the Jugulator party. We listened to the album like thirteen times until we actually album. got. We, we got so burned out on it, we just had to put on something else after a while. But, man, <coughs> we had a Jugulator party. They're both great records. Yeah. All right. Ju uh, Perrin. Okay. So Demolition and Jugulator are sort of like twins in a sense, right? In, in the same style of music. But what if Ripper was around for one more album and this came out? You know, right when Angel of Retribution was sort of like a little later on, but this. Would this have been a bigger mark for the band with Ripper? Would they have gotten more momentum? Because again, like like Giles was saying, they could have released the greatest heavy metal album back in the day, but it wouldn't have picked up any steam. Would this album have made a difference for Ripper back in the day? No. I mean, look, unfortunately, again, it, it was just a, a rough time for heavy metal. Uh, just like people weren't having a Motley Crue without Vince Neil, and people weren't completely having an Iron Maiden without Bruce Dickinson, People weren't having, with the masses, I mean, having uh, a Judas Priest without Rob Halford. And it's too bad because I, I kind of, you know, Jugulator and, and Demolition are not my favorite Judas Priest albums, not by a long shot. But they're good workmanlike albums that actually deserve uh, a little more of a legacy and credit than they get. And that would have just been the next one. I, I actually like Jugulator and Demolition better than this record because I feel like they're more varied. Like you talk about Demolition, I love the song Hell is Home. Uh, and I think that's a great example of the different things that Ripper could do with his voice. And I wish he would get more of an opportunity to do that kind of material on a KK's Priest album. So I find the KK's Priest albums, both of them, a little one dimensional. And even though that's the knock people have on Jugulator and Demolition, I think if they would listen to those albums with an open mind, they would find that they're a little bit more varied than they might think they are. So well, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. This is for 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 me. This is one of the greatest Judas Priest albums right here. It's I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying. I'm that. saying that, but I'm but it, saying but it, that. But it, but it and everybody it who knows deserve, me knows I love this. This. I'll say it doesn't deserve. 
knows that I love Demolition as well and Jugulator. Yeah, and, and you know what? And I will say it's absolutely shameful that Judas Priest act as if those two albums don't exist without they won't play a song live as Maiden Will with the Blaze albums. And in terms of just the availability uh, of them on streaming services or just in general is very, very poor. And I completely support Tim. Tim sells Defend Jugulator shirts on his website. And one of these days, I'm getting one of those shirts. Because, I'd like to get that. Because, uh, yeah, if the shipping wasn't so much to Canada, I'd probably get one. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I know yeah, the show yeah. isn't about that, but, you know. All right. Let's... We all love I, demolition. Stefan, okay, let's talk about just the song. No, 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 no. I have no right to say my word. All right, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I view that the albums made with a Ripper to be stop gaps in Priest's career. They had to keep the band together after losing its most potent element, Rob Alford. I'm sorry for me, Rob Alford is the beginning and the end of Judas Priest. There's nothing in between. And I understand, you know, they were sort of like caught like Aaron Maiden <clears throat> when they lost Bruce. Says, we don't want to stop. We need a singer. Maiden was smart enough to hire a different kind of singer. Uh, Priest chose to hire a sound alike. Fine. Their choice. But you have to understand that Judas Priest made its name and its sound with very crafty dual guitar heavy metal in the late 70s and early 80s. That was their creative peak. And during the 90s, the sound with O, I mean, the, uh, the, the sound with Owen was. Uh, it's like, okay, what's trendy in heavy metal now so we can stay on the road? People like it fast, mean, and but hard. But they've always done that, Stefan. Well, they've always done like that. Hitler Priest has always done that. Yeah, well, it doesn't make it right. And I felt that this album in particular was, a, you know, a stopgap period in their career. They're too early to re <clears throat> They're too young to retire. They want to keep playing. We need a singer. Why should we change names? Let's continue with this guy with the understanding it's a different band. And the sound was different. The music was different. And that is that. But to, to say that they belong wholeheartedly in the Judas Priest discography, okay, for the diehards, I, I too find it shameful that the band will not give them proper uh, recognition or let alone, you know, provide the material so diehards can still listen to them. But ultimately, the band's career, the band's career after Rob returned, they said these were stopgap records. They do not belong in our discography at least not with me you know bruce dickinson may enjoy singing uh, blaze songs and and thank god paul songs but you know rob alford judas priest felt differently um i did not like those two records enough <clears throat> to miss them either live or on record this is these are not albums i listen to at home yeah. at least not very often unless i have to be on this show and <laughs> i i listen to them regularly actually i, I know yeah. Josh does too there's, there's right there's album so much, there's so many rock metal you know power metal trash metal speed metal music out there that i can certainly do without uh, so, and still so, have enough material to listen to. So, Giles, okay, let's go off of what Stefan said. It's not really Judas Priest if Tim Ripper's there, but if Richie Faulkner's there replacing KK, suddenly it's Judas Priest. If right, I mean that's what you're saying. You're saying that I, I, you could replace people. I think what happens is people get way too hung up on the singer. It's just it it it, it goes back to the days of the you know. The 50s and 60s when the, the the singer was kind of the it was you know 
it was Frankie in the knockouts, you know, it was it was Joey and the shitheads or whatever. It was always like the singer and the guys in the back. Whereas heavy metal's a little bit different. You tell me that Glenn Tipton and KK Downing were not the guys that provided the music. Last time I checked, Rob Helford wasn't like an amazing guitar player. He wasn't coming up with the riffs and he wasn't coming up with the, the lead guitar solos, the melodies and things like that. Amazing, amazing singer, great vocal melodies, great songwriter in his own right. But you can't just take the singer and then everyone else is insignificant. Singers can be replaced. Guitar players can be replaced. Everyone can be replaced. Well, it also everyone... depends on where the songs are coming from. Yeah. Well, the only guy who hasn't been replaced in Judas Priest is is the bass player. No disrespect. Yes. Well, if they but... replace Ian, I'm out. I'm out. If Ian Hill goes, I'm out. I mean, let's yeah. let's. I think people get a little too emotionally involved as well. Let's by this logic, then then Iron Maiden with Bruce Dickinson is a cover band. Guess what? Cover bands don't yeah, have members. Act. Cover right. bands and tri- cover bands and tribute acts don't have members that were part of the real band at any point. I mean, to get even more technical, uh, he is one of the founding members of or a co-founding members. KK. I mean, he was there right from the beginning. I mean, with uh, Al Atkins, correct? Well, um, so I don't think anybody is disputing any of this, right? I mean, I, I well, I mean, like he has to me. He doesn't have a right to use Judas Priest going out as Judas Priest, but I think he has a right saying it's KK's priest. It's tying the legacy with 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 the present. But oh, but Perrin, l- let's talk about the music because I think we're just kind of going off track, here, right? Yeah. Okay. Twenty minutes. When, when you listen to this album, what were the songs that really stood out for you? Let's not go through all the songs, but what were the songs that you said? You know what? This is a great album. Or so, great song. You know, I, I will say so. The songs that I like better because I I feel the album is a little too same same. So the songs I like the best are the ones where uh, Tim isn't singing high, but he's singing kind of lower, uh, where there's not kind of painkillerish like solos, but there's something different and there's more riffing happening. So my favorite song is the second song of the record, Strike of the Viper, for the reason I said, opening riff, great opening riff, uh, Ripper singing a bit lower and he's not doing that ah, thing like he does all the time and uh, different uh, and I also like when they slow it down. I, I kind of like the the last song, "Wash Away the Sins" on the record is something. Wa- uh, "Wash Away Your Sins," sorry, is something mm-hmm. I like. Uh, and and actually, the opening track, "Sons of the Sentinel," I didn't love the opening of the verses, but once they get to the chorus, where there's a really good riff, and I guess that sums it up for me. I like the more riff oriented stuff. Not well, I, I, I would I want to ask I'm gonna ask the fan now, but I want to say something to what you said. I think very important. I think AJ Mills, the guitarist, and KK are absolutely what a team. Like what a fantastic team. What do you think about what were some of your highlights there, Stefan, before we get into your negatives? Wash away your uh, sins for me is the better track. Uh because uh maybe because it sounds like uh like genuine early days Judas Priest. Uh but yeah, uh, him 66, I thought was pretty crazy song, extremely crazy song. But this is one I, I, I played on repeat a couple of times because I was, ah, you know, it has this grinder vocal sound without necessarily trying to, to be speed metal. And, 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 and I recognized a lot of the metal I liked, you know, I, you're going to laugh, but as much as I like to dismiss KK's Priest, this, musically, is a good album. There's good tracks. I think, as a whole, it, it holds together, and certainly much better than his previous album. Uh, but again, what it is missing is originality. That is it. That is it. That is it. But Look, uh, my the one that I thought, you know, usually when I progress towards the end of a record, I tend to think that they keep the worst songs for the end. Not in this case. You want to listen to it uh, right up until the end. Uh, Pledge your souls and wash away your sins. Uh, they're, they're, they're the gems at the end of the record as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> All right. 
So Giles, let's talk about the voice. Tim Ripper Owens <clears throat> as the singer on this album. What you're a vocalist, a vocalist extraordinaire. Um, what do you think about the vocals just for the whole album on this new album? Really good. Uh, I noticed he's doing some different stuff as well. Like if you listen to Sons of the Sentinel, the verses, it's a little rougher, a little raspier in places. I think there's definitely been a, whether it was a conscious effort or just the way the tunes kind of led him, uh, there is definitely some variation on this. I, I'm always down for listening to Tim. I, you know, I, I just I grab everything he's on. I think he's just a really cool singer, really, really, really good singer. Um, are you asking me what my favorite songs are? Yeah, go with your favorite songs. Go ahead. Uh, I know you don't have your. I don't, I don't, do you want to name them for you or? Yeah, help Go me ahead. out because I, I haven't memorized Sons, of, Sons the of the Sentinel. I know you don't I have it in it. front of you. Yes, yeah, I love Strike it. of the Viper. Yep. Uh, Reap the Whirlwind. Uh, yeah, that's cool. But the next one I love. It was the one first shot, single. One more shot. One more of, shot of, of glory. glory. That's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. There's a there's almost like a black metal kind of riff in there. I love that that section there. That's really cool with the double kick. Uh, I really like it. And what's the song after the song that comes next? I'm six six. I'm six. No, no, the, the next one. The sinner rides again. The sinner rides yeah, again. The, the one, the one after that. Keep, Keep the, keeper, keeper of the graves. Of graves. Yeah, keeper of the graves. Man, that is that is a serious tune. The only, I mean, I love both the records. I love the first one. I thought the first one was killer. I think this one's killer. The only thing I'm, this one's definitely a darker record. There's mm -hmm. no brothers of the road. There's no kind of, you know. I think it needs just like at least one of them just to kind of lighten it up a touch. It's definitely a darker, a darker, heavier record, which may suit some people better. I, I wish there was just like a, like I said, a tune like Brothers of the Road or whatever, just a, a bit more kind of sing along, kind of anthemic metal tune, just to break it up a touch. But that's a real small complaint because I think this new album's absolutely killer, really good. You know, I, I agree with you. I, I think that there's only one track that I'm not really crazy about is pledge your souls. But I think I, I highlighted every single song saying, I like it. It's upbeat. It's fresh. It's got a great production. The fucking killer guitars, killer drums. Uh, and the vocals are amazing, but Perrin, okay. Vocals I know you, what would you have and changed? An incredible guitar playing on this record too. Incredible. What would you have changed Perrin? I know that you're not the biggest fan of this album, but what would you have changed? Yeah. Look, I think that KK thinks that everybody's favorite Judas Priest album is Painkiller. And if your favorite album is Painkiller, uh, you're going to love this because it's it's very, very fast uh, in, the, in the way Painkiller is, for the most part, very, very fast. But for a lot of people, myself including, myself included, Painkiller is only like my 10th favorite Judas Priest album. You know, some people put it on a pedestal. I, I like British Steel and Screaming for Vengeance and and Defenders, and Sin After Sin, and Sad Wings of Destiny, and yes, even Turbo, better. Uh, wow. So so I, so I think that's a mistake on KK's part. So I'd like to see this album be more varied. I'd like to see a song more like A Touch of Evil. Uh, if we're talking uh, the Ripper stuff, I'd like to hear a song more like Hell is Home or Bloodstained. So look, as much as I like heavy metal, this album is too fast and too heavy for me. It's it's not varied enough. I would like to see, and that for me, if we need to compare KK's Priest to Judas Priest, I say game set and match Judas Priest in most cases because there's a better flow to the records where this thing just bludgeons you to death. And some people are going to say, yeah, man, I love heavy metal. I want to be bludgeoned to death for 40 minutes. No, honestly, no, no, no word of a lie. This is only 40 minutes long, nine songs. I had to stop after four or five songs, 20 minutes in, walk away for five or 10 minutes and then come back to it because it was just too much. It was just too much. Too much metal. Too, too much, much metal for you. You just couldn't stand it. Too much okay. screechy guitar solo. He had to have a lot. He had to have a lot. I, 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 yeah. If I can, if I can intervene. I, I'm going to bring Laura Ann okay, on as well because I know she's a huge supporter of KK's Priest and she always out there. Uh, I'm going to bring her on. You state your point, state your point there, Stefan, as I bring her on, okay? Go ahead. I think uh, Perrin has essentially said it best. Uh, you know, KK Priest is a band made up of talented people who can write songs, sure, and perform and well-recorded, but ultimately, KK 
I completely agree. He said, what is popular among diehard priest fans? Oh, they like it hard, mean, and fast? Let's do a hard, mean, and fast album. M you know, my favorite albums, you know, they're the later. They're the stained class and s sin after sin. And it's, you know, hell bent for leather. These are my favorite priest records if you're going to look at the past to try to create something original i think they should have returned to their roots i think kk should have returned to his roots rather than than inspire himself from latter-day judas priest uh one more thing i want to say about the songs okay <clears throat> sons of the sentinel the sinner rides again. Read the whirlwind. Come on. He's copying old Judas Priest songs, names, to make it sound like the real thing. The return of the sentinel. The sinner rides again. Oh, remember we had a song called Sinner? Like, please, please. Please. All right. All right. So, so <laughs> I brought in Laura Ann because I know she's, you know, a huge supporter of KK's Priest and always out there and, you know, uh, supporting the band. Uh, you know, I thought, okay, you've heard everybody discuss this, right? I'll let you have a couple of minutes here. Everybody wants to introduce you to Laura Ann. Hi, Laura. What do you think? What do you think of all hey, these guys. comments? What do you think of all <laughs> these comments right off the bat? What do you think? I mean, are you taking notes here? I mean, what do you think? <laughs> I have a lot of notes. Uh, it's been uh, it's been quite a ride since uh, since the album came out on Friday. It's been crazy. Um, I'm on Instagram as KK Downing all day. I, you know, I run that. We have about ten thousand followers, and you know, I, I think KK is the sinner, right? That that's been I think kind of his alter ego since he's been with Judas Priest. So, I you know, I I think giving a a, a nod to his history with the band is important, but I don't think in any way, shape or form there's, there's any, you know, copying or covering going on with, with any of his albums. He's telling a story, right? And I think if you look at the lyrics, however you want to say they are, you know, I think this is coming from him and he's telling wow. his story and one album runs into the other album. That's it's a, a very important note, actually. That's something we missed. There is a concept that he had put in place. Absolutely. You know, you've got Demas. I don't think he's Demas. I think he's the sinner, that alter ego thing. And, you know, with um, with Sentinel, I think that's a continuation also because the end of that video, right, from Sermons is very sad. Yeah. I mean, you know, you kind of cry at the end thinking, oh, my God, it's it's over. But then... Here we are, you know, with the next album, he's, you know, reprising it again. So, you know, I think he has the right, you know, he was a priest for years and there are going to be touches of his former band. It's it's in him. So I, I think if you listen to the lyrics, there's a lot of undertones there. I've only listened to it a couple of times since Friday. I've got to dig in a little bit more, but that's kind of what, I'm getting from it and listening to his interviews and, you know, his descriptions on, you know, what his thoughts were, you know, while he was writing it, it's, you know, it's unmistakable who he is. It's, it's a perfectly defensible point of view. And I, and I agree with you. It's yeah, it's his identity. Uh, but like I said, I still think that it could have been a KK Downing album. You know, a KK Downing material, KK Downing what solo is? record. It is. That, it is his material. He wrote it over Christmas. No, I'm not questioning. I'm not questioning it. It's his material mm -hmm. trying to sound like Judas Priest. But wait a second. He is, no. he is one third of Judas I, Priest, anyways. I mean, no, I, don't I don't think don't that. Is, yeah, one I don't fifth, think that at all. I don't, I don't think I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't think he's trying to sound like Judas Priest. He was with Judas Priest for 40 years. That sound is always going to be in him. You can't erase that. 
at all. So uh, that's a good, I, I don't that's think... a good point. That's a good point yeah. because if Rob if Rob if Rob Helford goes and does a solo record, it's an element of that sounds like Judas Priest. Why? Of course, guess, Rob. Guess what, oh, yeah. You know? So, right, it's, Rob it's, is always going to sound like Rob. You, I, I remember I'll never when, take that I away. Remember when, I remember when Slash did the Snake Pit album, and people went, "Oh, you know, you sound yeah. a little bit like Guns N' Roses." He goes, "No, oh, he is <laughs> part, part of the Guns N' Roses sound is me. That's what you're hearing when I step out of that. It's still my sound." So you're exactly, exactly. right. You're exactly you close, right. The same thing. Like that's a great reference because if you close your eyes, you know that it's Slash playing. You close your eyes. Yeah. You know it's KK Downing playing. He's got that distinct sound that's going to carry with him no matter what he does. All right. And you, and Paran you, do, Paran you Paran go ahead. I, and you, I, you, I just, you know, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just no, going to go say, ahead. I, I, I was just going to say, you know, I don't begrudge KK for being KK. There is absolutely no doubt that uh, a lot of this is just in him and it flows out naturally. But one of the things I loved about Judas Priest is that they, they were many things. Yes, they were painkiller, but they were also desert plains. They were also before the dawn. That they was my era. Yeah, they were also I, out in the know. cold from yeah. Turbo. And so yeah. I would just like to see more of, of what Judas Priest was in this. I okay, so so in other words, you don't want him to be Judas Priest, but you want him to be more like Judas Priest. Like, I don't understand but, that concept. Well, I don't have, but Jimmy, <laughs> I've never said I don't want us to be like Judas Priest. Maybe that's Stefan's point. But okay. my point is, <laughs> this album is too hard, too fast, too heavy, too much of one thing. Judas Priest. I do, do kind of get, I do kind of get what parents say to a point. I would love it if there was a Desert Plains on this record just to break yes. it up a little bit. I would love That's it if there was a Living After Midnight but there ain't, mm, and what we have is still yeah. awesome. But but yeah. no, I, and that's, that's a valid why point. It's a seven on ten for me, Joe. That's Giles. That's why it's a mediocre album for me, and not a great album. And if you had these same heavy songs with two or three things to give it a bit more variety, then that would probably take it to another level. That's, that's a just fair me. comment. Like I said, pe yeah, people, I, yeah, I think it's a contender for metal what? album of the year. I think it is. Yeah, All right, Stefan, Stefan, here, here's the big question to Stefan. Here's the big question to Stefan. KK comes to town. Would you go see KK's Priest live? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, as a teenager, uh, KK and uh, Glenn had a major influence on me, even though I never touched a guitar in my life to play it. Uh, but my first Judas Priest concert, 1982, I think, the, the uh, Screaming for Vengeance tour, seeing this guy live uh, is something else. He, he's the real deal when it comes to metal. It's too bad I'll never see, uh, we'll never see uh, Glenn and, and KK do their jewel thing on stage for for a lot of reasons, not the least uh, Glenn's illness, it's too bad. But when these two were moving on stage, I'm sorry, they, they took the crown. Even I, I thought oh, absolutely. they were even more impressive than Iron Maiden. Uh, and I miss that. I find that the uh, new version of Judas Priest, uh, they still try to do it, but it's not the same. I would like to see KK. I've never seen Ripper live. Would I have <laughs> gone to see Judas Priest with Ripper, even though I was not into their albums? Yeah, I would have gone. But then All again, right. we'll see every heavy metal concert. Charles, <laughs> Charles I, I, I know it's a no-brainer here. Would you see KK <clears throat> live? Would you be excited to Dude, see I've, I've seen KK live. I, I love KK. I love KK's priest. I love KK. If KK wanted to like kick me in the nuts just because he thought it would be funny, I would let him do it because he's so awesome. I love KK and I love KK's priest. Absolutely. And I think what would excite me about I, KK's I, priest, I, I, you, you, I just want to say something, Stefan. I think what would excite me about seeing KK's priest is not only you're getting the classic Judas Priest songs, not only you're getting some great songs that they've done on their two albums that really go that. over live well. But you're getting the Ripper era songs too that they're not being played by Judas Priest. So you're getting a really huge treat. Okay, Perrin, would you go see KK's Priest? I know what your answer is going to be, but go ahead. Uh, absolutely. You know, anything I'm saying here is just my personal taste and constructive criticism coming from me. But look, I, I've seen 
pretty much every version of Priest. I've seen them with, with the late Dave Holland. I've seen them with Scott Travis. I saw Priest with Ripper, and I saw Priest with, obviously with Halford. I've seen Rob on his own in various I incarnations. And I I love kind of offshoots and generations of bands. It's interesting. So I'd love to hear some of these songs in a live setting. And in a Friday night, after a couple beers, I'm gonna I'm gonna want to be bludgeoned to death. And at the same time, <laughs> they're probably gonna they're gonna play some Priest stuff. I wish he would, you know, I, I loved Ripper's version of, of, uh, of God, I'm blanking, uh, Joan Baez. Uh, Diamonds and, and Rust. Rust. I, I loved, and I love Ripper's version of Diamond and Rust. I know when they're doing, playing live, they're playing a lot of the painkiller stuff. I wish they dropped the painkiller stuff because we have enough of that type of material. I'd love to see <clears> them go back to doing some of the things they were doing when Ripper was in Priest because... When I, for me, one of the, probably the definitive version of Diamonds and Rust might be with Ripper doing it on the live 98 Meltdown record. It's fantastic. So I will right. absolutely see this band. In there you go. So wanna, we have a consensus here. Laura let me I, ask I, you. I, I want to I add something. <laughs> I want to add something. Yes. For, all the people t for all the people talking about the lyrics, saying the lyrics are referencing old priest songs, well, these are the same people that have got every single one of these people has got a copy of Halford's Resurrection. How many damn references are in that? Even as he even references, exactly. even, he even references fight. I walked alone into a fight on the song Made in Hell. Then check out the album. Uh, what's that? What's the record that he did with Priest? Halford when Halford came back. What was that? Help Angel, me out. Angel of Retribution. Angel of Retribution. Retribution. Yeah, Angel of Retribution. They're, they're like they self-reference on almost every damn song. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. It's not a big deal. Get over it. KK can do it too. So and, does and, Judas Priest and so does Helfit. It's awesome. It continues the story, like she said. And, and you know, we keep forgetting that it is a story. And that's why you're see, hearing so many references throughout the, 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 the two albums that he's done. So right. we have to keep that right. in mind. Tell me about the band, Lauren. Tell me about every, all the members, the drums, guitar. Just tell me about that. Oh, my God. I mean, I think they're a really Plug cohesive. Those guys. But yeah, I mean, they're a really cohesive band. They work so well together. You know, you've got Ripper, whose vocals are so raw now, especially on this album. I was like, whoa, you know, I got to turn my buds down. But I mean, he has really developed his voice to a totally different level. And I think the change in that is because I, he recorded a lot of the vocals from home. He didn't do it with the band. So I think he was laser focused on his sound and his delivery. And I mean, you know, you've got... KK and AJ, I mean, I, I just think that they're magic together. You know, they really feed so well off of each other. You've got Tony Newton on bass. I mean, a, a bass player that moves around the stage, you know, he's really got a lot of energy. And what could I say? Sean Elge, look at him in that video. One more shot stands up at the drums and pounds it like he, he really took over. So I, I think everybody is just working themselves to their best abilities. And like I just said, I think this is a contender for metal album of the year. And I'm sorry, I, I wasn't super clear. You, you're running the, um, you're running the Instagram or the website or it's, what, what it's you... my, it's my Instagram page. It's um, KK Downing all day. So, so you're flying the flag for you're, you're flying the flag for KK's priest and KK. Yeah, I mean, I I've been a fan. I've been a fan since I'm fourteen years old. So uh, you know, Judas Priest. I, I went to my first concert here in '81 at the Palladium when Iron Maiden opened for them. So uh, you know, I read KK's book. I was very inspired, and one day, just on a whim, I decided to open up an Instagram account so, in so his I think, honor. I think, what we, I think what we need to do here is I think we need to congratulate you on doing an awesome job for flying the flag. You're doing Thank God's you. work. You're keeping the KK, <laughs> you're, you're doing. Yeah. You're keeping the KK's priest flag flying proud. The metal flag yeah. flying proud. You're doing a wonderful thing. Please keep doing Thank it. Thank you. I will. I, Thank I, you. I do agree. I did not realize you were my age. I thought you were my <laughs> daughter's age. But uh, yeah, I think fans like you, diehard fans like you, yeah. are needed to keep the legacy of of bands and, and sub bands alive and and i thank you for it here's an anecdote for you 1981 uh i had 
a group of friends who went to see Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, uh, Judas Priest with Iron Maiden opening at Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. I was 14 years old and my parents said, no, you're not going with older guys to New York City back when I it was. snuck. I snuck. It was the Palladium in 81. Yeah. That they and, played at. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. I, uh, so when did they play Madison Square Garden? It was after, I think it was the following year okay, they played well, the, the Garden. Yeah. The following year, my friends went. I stayed behind. And then my friends in front of Madison Square Garden, New York City. Back then, it was Badass City. <laughs> they Still went is. To, <laughs> they went to a, uh, a scalper to, uh, to upgrade their tickets. Right? And the scalper yeah. goes, yeah, sure, sure. Come over here. Come over here in the alley. We'll do the transaction. Scalper takes out a gun. Give me your tickets. Give me your money. Yeah. Ah, crazy. crazy. Unfortunately, Scal- that's still happening here. <laughs> guys, nice. guys, on that note, there it is. There's the album. Go pick it up. You heard we tore it apart. We dissected it. We got every angle on it. And now you can make up your own mind. You know, after all, our opinions are varied opinions. Loran, thanks yeah. for jumping on. Guys, it's been sure. a pleasure. And the funny thing, if I can say, is that as much as I trashed it, I know for a fact that I'll be listening to it over and over and we'll go to his concert. There you go. There you go. What are you going to do? A metalhead at heart. What are you going to do? It's great on my earbuds at the gym. (laughs) (laughs) I ride my bike. I've been riding my bike listening to it. The pace is amazing. I've been been riding my bike listening to it. It kicks ass. It really right. does. It re- and you know, just you know, just to, and I don't think one is album is better than the other. I just think it's a continuation, and they definitely went heavier this time. And there's a reason for it, and I think that's a question for KK. And you know? as Giles said, they both Judas Priest and KK's Priest can exist parallel they to can. each other, and they, there's no yeah. big deal. It's no big deal. Absolutely. Both bands can exist. I, I think people just need to, you know, have an open mind, listen to both, and and thank, you know, thank both bands for, you know, flying the flag and keeping it going because, you know, they could have just easily retired and went off into the sunset. No, but they're in the studios and they're touring and they're playing on stage. And That's I, exactly know, I, right. I, a lot of people, right. a lot of people, yeah. it seems like we're in this culture now where everything these bands do, these older bands, every move they make, there's people complaining about it. So my answer to that exactly. is exactly. My answer to that is, well, don't worry, because in ten years, all these bands will be gone, and you won't have anything to complain about. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, right. You know, it's like and, let's, celeb- and, let's, yeah. let's celebrate them while we've got them. Every great album exactly. that comes out, from some, every album that comes out from a KK or a Judas Priest or an Iron Maiden, it's a bonus at this point. We're lucky to have them still. Enjoy and and stay just, away just, from the clickbait. <laughs> oh yeah, stay away from the clickbait. All right, guys, it's, have yourself yeah. a wonderful Sunday. Thank you for all the you commentary. too. Thanks for having me. Hey, it was great talking to you, and I love hearing your memories of the early days because oh my god, there's so not, many. You and I are the oldest on this panel today. Oh god, I, I'm about to run out of battery. I'll catch. I'm you a grandfather. Later. Okay, See bye, ya. guys. <laughs>